is Jeff, Fluent American, checking in. Today we're focusing on animals, talking about all kinds of animal vocabulary, um, common names for animals, we'll practice pronouncing them. We'll also talk about sounds that they make, because that's always one of my favorite things, is just to kind of hear how different language groups pronounce the noises, the sounds, the, the, the words that they use to describe them. Um, and we'll also talk about like some common verbs that you can also use with these animals as well. So today's gonna be lots of vocab, but also lots of pronunciation too. And as we go through this, you know, feel free to in the chat, let me know what, how are these, how are these things said in your own languages? What sorts of noises do they make um, in your own language, especially as compared to um, English? And of course we're gonna be focusing on American English for that. Um, and as we're going through this too, um, I'm going to be writing on my screen a lot. So you may see some shaking and you may hear some typing and things like that as I put some things in. And my apologies for that, but I just, all of the words that we're saying and using are clear. And of course, if you have questions as we go through this, please let me know. And already we got some people. Hey son, good to see you. Thanks for joining us again. Always great. Um, Okay, so I have lots of different animals we're going to go through. Let's maybe begin just by talking about how to pronounce each of these animals to make sure you're um, pronouncing them correctly. Um, so the first one here, lion. Again, make sure you get that I sound and an N sound at the end with that short I. So it's not E, it's more N, N. So again, if you're, especially for like my Mandarin speakers, Japanese, Korean speakers, make sure that that N sound is really clear. So it's not N, uh, it's not lion, it's lion. Lion, so watch out for that N sound. Also note that, you know, you have these two vowel sounds, right? You have the lie and then you have the N. So we're gonna join those together with a slight Y sound. So like lion, lion, lion. It's very subtle, but it helps just kind of smooth the transition, lion. How about our second word, monkey, monkey, making sure that you hold that long I sound at the end. So it's not monkey, it's monkey, monkey. Um, our next word, mosquito, mosquito. If there's only one syllable you want to get right here, it's that middle one with the long I sound, the E, mosqui, mosquito. You also want to make sure, though, that the O sound is punchy enough. <laughs> and, of course, we've got roars. <laughs> I've seen some posts of that. Yeah, we'll be talking lots of roars and growls and, and things like that, too. We'll talk about those in a moment. Um, for mosquito, make sure that the O sound is strong enough. It's not mosquito. It's mosquito, just to make sure that that push is really clear. Notice that first syllable is also reduced with that schwa sounds like m, m, mosquito. Um, second one, I mean our second to last one here, wolf, wolf, uh, w, wolf, wolf. This is kind of like what you see like in polar, full, wolf, wolf. It's not wolf, it's more wolf, wolf. That L is not actually pronounced, but something you'll hear. It's more like a dark L sound, wolf. Wolf. So what I can actually do is I can keep the front of my tongue down against the bottom of my mouth for that. So it's not wolf, it's wolf, wolf. Same thing with the last word too, owl, owl. I can hold the tip of my tongue, the front of my tongue against the bottom of my mouth for that full word, owl, owl. Also, you can see my lip position change as we go from the ow to the o. Owl, owl. So again, lion, monkey, mosquito, wolf, and owl. Also, it says up to my wife and my son are about to enter, so you may hear some noises in the background. It's going to be exciting and fun, um, but my apologies if it's a little bit distracting. Okay, so let's go over some, some, what are the noises that these different animals make? And one thing we had seen earlier, so we saw for the lion, keyword there is going to be, I'm going to actually use our chat box a bit. So for lions, Keywords that you're going to see are, for instance, first word, roar, roar. That's like, you know, when they're like the loud noises that they make, like, rawr, like those things are roars. You may see also spelled different ways. Like you may see them with like an A-W, like rawr. Um, another sound that you may see associated with lions too is also, and lots of other animals as well, um, growl, growl. For growling, you can kind of think of like a dog. What's the difference between a roar and a growl? A lot of times when an animal feels threatened or or like they're about to be attacked, they may want to try to scare off other animals, try to scare other animals away. So they will do what's called a growl, growl, 
and that's kind of like when they get like like a dog you see a dog and the dog may be a little bit scared or something they may do that that's a growl sound hey so made it great to see you let me know of course if you have questions as we go through this okay so again um growling is like the er and then the roar is actually like the rar like that those are the differences between those Ooh, a question about the volume here let me i can try to boost it give me one second boost our settings also try to move my mic closer thank you guys for letting me know okay so i boosted the volume a bit let me also move this closer thank you for telling me how is that let me know if you guys can hear that more okay um and apparently my wife's making ice cream. Okay. Strawberry ice cream for everybody. Okay. And Ibrahim's here. This is great. Everyone's here. Um, so again, let me know if that volume is a little bit clearer for you guys. Also try to speak a little bit louder. Um, it's weird because I had tested the volume beforehand, but um, whatever. Things happen. Um, let's talk about just like some common verbs also that you may see with um, lines is in animals like that is a verb, for instance, like pounce pounce with that ow sound ow it sounds a lot like pound but again it's more tss, tss, pounce pounce and to give you just to give you a quick example of what that looks like imagine that again like um an animal is like jumping on another animal to try to attack it I'll give you a quick idea what that looks like and this is again um when you're studying vocab this is what i always suggest um start looking at words to see um look at the image search and kind of see what they get. And I think, um, here we go. This is a good one. So you can see a lion pouncing right here. So it's kind of like that jump when they're about to attack something. So common verb you may see with lions is pounce, pounce. Okay. Our next word. So for monkeys, monkeys in terms of animals, a common sound that people are taught with animals is that monkeys the sound they make is like like ooh ooh ah ah like ooh ooh ah ah. That's like a common sound you'll see in like kids songs and things like that. Um, for for monkeys, and you guys of course can let me know what sound they make like in Arabic and things. Um, and in terms of like if you're looking for a verb, like what's the verb I can use? Like we said for lions, you can growl, um, you can roar. Words that you may see for monkeys, you may see like um, for instance like screech. Like, like for instance, it's almost like a scream, the type of sound that they make when they're together. Make sure, again, you get that long E sound. Scree, screech, screech. Okay? So that's a verb that you can use um, for monkeys. Question here about pouncing. Can we use pouncing in wrestling? I mean, yeah, pouncing is that act of, like, when you kind of, like, jump to... When you jump, especially, like, for attacking someone. So, like... You you could definitely see it in wrestling, especially like if you're about to grab someone, like you could pounce to to grab them, kind of like jump out them, jump at them. Okay. Um, yeah, so those are monkeys. Next one is mosquitoes, a very fun insect, right? Um, mosquitoes. Probably some common verbs that you'll see with them are like buzz. What's a buzz? Common for lots of insects. Buzzes are when you get to like. Zzz. Z, 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 just kind of like making like a z type sound this is buzz we'll see this for bees as well okay and common verbs that you're going to see with mosquitoes obviously are probably going to be bite okay so what mosquitoes do they bite you um you can get a mosquito bite and then a, a verb for that like for instance if you get a mosquito bite what do you do like you kind of do like that action because it's so you could say like mosquito bites are itchy, right? And the itchy means that you want to like scratch, okay? So you could say like, I want to scratch the itch. So notice that itchy is the adjective, itch is the noun, and then that action is to scratch. Okay, so you want to scratch an itch if a mosquito bites you and things like that, okay? Our next one. Again, we mentioned wolf, wolf. Make sure that the L sound's not pronounced. Key words that you're gonna see for wolves. So what are the sound they make? 
Okay, I think a key word that you're gonna see with wolves. Okay, notice the plural of that is wolves. Wolves was like a V Z type sound. Vz, vz. Wolves, wolves. Okay, but wolves are also famous for howling. A common phrase, in fact, that you'll see with that is like howl at the moon. Okay, so like you can see like wolves like howling at the moon at night. Son, can you tell me sizzle for? Oh, for for writing maybe. Um, yeah, so wolves can howl. Okay, and that's like that sound when they do like ow, like that sort of sound. Okay, and Ibrahim is excited for the owl. Owls coming up. If you guys, of course, if you have a, if you have an idea what sound an owl makes, you can let me know in the comments. Um, also for wolf. Some other key vocab for wolves are also, for instance, a pack. Wolves travel in a pack. So you see, for instance, a pack of wolves. That's a pretty common, like when you see like a group that's together. Okay, those will, that will be called a pack. Okay. Other, like just some common vocab you'll see related to wolves. You'll see like, um, for instance, like alpha or like alpha dogs and things like that. And a lot of times the alpha dog refers to like the, the leader of the pack, of the person who's in charge. And in fact, that's a good collocation that you'll see for animals, but also in like other industries as well. Like if someone is the leader of the pack, that means like they're, they're someone that's like kind of doing better than everyone else or everyone else kind of follows what they do. Okay. Great. Okay. So again, we talked about lions, we talked about monkeys, mosquitoes, wolves. If you guys have questions so far about any of them, be sure to let me know. But we are going now to owls. We have a question, what, what sound will an owl make? The verbs for owls are going to be hoot. So owls hoot. Yeah, and just like Zobeda just said. Yeah, perfect. So owls hoot. Okay, it's like similar to the sound like um, who. It's like in English, like, like who, like who, who. Like that's kind of the common sound that owls are known for making. There's lots of like, for instance, knock, knock jokes. Like for instance, um, oh, I can't even remember what they are. Like knock, knock, who's there? And then you could say like who, and then like say like it's an owl or something like that. I forget the whole joke. If someone knows the whole knock, knock joke for that, you can let me know um, in the comments. I haven't done it in a long time. Okay. Um, but yeah, so owls hoot. Um, trying to think of other key things for owls. Um, something that we'll see for birds, obviously birds fly, but when they're flying, some other key things too. When we, when a bird moves its wings, like to fly, like when they move their wings, that action is called flapping or to flap. Okay, flap can be used as a noun or a verb. It has that ah sound like in cat, so it's not flop, it's flap, flap, okay? Um, making sure again, you're getting that ah sound. So, Beta, I'm glad you're here because I'm working on the, the placement video right now. So, make sure that when you're saying that ass sound, you're really getting it like deep enough. One thing we're seeing with English, again, the sound is really coming from your throat, your chest. It's very deep. Okay. But we'll, we'll talk more about that in uh, um, tomorrow's video. Um, so, again, to, to move their wings is to flap. Okay. So, again, we had lions, monkeys, mosquitoes, wolves, and owls. Okay. I'll leave this up for just a second to see if anyone has any questions about these um other information about owls i don't <laughs> have a whole lot no more um they're famous for being wise they're a symbol of wisdom um hooting flapping uh, i guess another key verb for all these animals to a degree even mosquitoes i guess it's like to to hunt you know that that action of finding animals to eat is hunting so making sure um all of these are carnivores or at least relying on blood, I guess, in the case of mosquitoes. And I forget what that's called. Um, but yeah, all these are carnivores that are doing some hunting. Even monkeys, I think, eat bugs and things. Okay. All right. And in fact, let me, we can go over that word really quick. It's a good word to know. So again, a carnivore. A carnivore is a meat-eating animal. Okay, so if something is a carnivore, that means that they eat meat. For... Um, you can see a lot of times if you see like a root like carn, that's usually, you know, coming from Latin, showing a sign like reference to body or other animals that don't eat meat, they only eat plants. Those are called herbivores, herbivores, or most people, most people are omnivores, 
omnivores. You can say omnivore or omnivore. You can use a reduction for the eye, use a short eye or a schwa sound. It's your choice. So you can say omnivore or, omni or a long eye sound, not a short eye, excuse me. So omnivore or omnivore. Um, and those are animals that eat both plants and meat. Okay, so most people I would say are omnivores. All right, moving on to our next one then. Give me a second to load it up for us. Okay, got some more animals for us here. Before I do my own explanation, see if you know what any of the sounds these animals make. Okay. In fact, you can let me know in the comments. Before we get to those sounds, I'm going to just practice pronunciation really quick to make sure we're all on the, the same page. Our, our first word here, mouse. Mouse. Again, making sure you get that ow sound. Hey, Rod, good to see you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Hope that your um, stream went well today. Um, so again, ow, mouse, mouse. And notice again the movement of my mouse, starting wide and then closing round lips. Ow, ow, mouse, mouse. Um, next one, hippo, hippo. Again, short I sound, followed by the O sound at the end. So again, that I sound, hi, hippo. The, the full word for that, of course, is going to be hippopotamus, hippopotamus. When you say the full form, hippopotamus, just make sure. Um, hippopot, the ah sound needs to be the strongest syllable. Make sure that's really strong. Hippopotamus. You can say everything else really quickly and not even pronounce it all that well. But as long as people hear the pa, they'll understand you. Hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. Okay? She does not like animals. I'm guessing it's a bit. Just going to take a guess at that. Um, our next word. Pig. Pig. Again, a short I sound. So it's not pig. It's more pig. Pig. And again, my biggest tip for that short eye sound, make sure sides of your tongue touching your top teeth. After that, we have horse, horse. Make sure that that O sound is strong enough before the R, or, 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 horse, horse. And our last word, bird, bird. That er sound tends to be a tricky sound. So again, make sure that the back of your tongue is high enough and curling up the front of your tongue. Burr, burr, bird. Really strong R sound after the beat. Okay, bird. Also note for bird that that D sound is voiced, so make sure that your, your throat is vibrating. Bird, bird. Okay, sounds that these animals make, starting with a mouse, probably the most common verb you'll see is like a squeak. What's a squeak? Squeak is like squeak, squeak. Like m mice, plural again of mouse is mice. Okay, mice is your plural form. And so again, if you Hopefully you don't have mice in your house, at least not mice that you don't want. Um, but if you do have mice, um, you know that um, they, they have those really high-pitched noises when they um, when they make no sound. Um, so again, the, the sound you could use for them are squeaks. They speak with squeaks. Uh, our next one, are for the hippopotamus, the hippo. I don't actually know... I'll be honest, my <laughs> hippo knowledge is a little bit weak. So if you guys have better knowledge than me, if anyone here is a vet or works in a zoo or anything like that, be sure to let me know. Um, my guess is that they can also make some sort of a, a growl sound. Okay. Ooh, getting already some guesses for horses. Um, how about for pigs? What's the sound that a pig makes? Any ideas? Anyone been to the farm recently? In English... Your sound is going to be oink, oink. So pigs, oink. Oink can be a, a noun or a verb. Okay, so pigs can oink. Horses, Ibrahim's close, just got to swap the I and the E. Okay, so nay. Think of words, for instance, like a neighbor. Okay, nay, nay. Okay, so horses, nay. Perfect. How about for birds? What sounds do birds make? Any ideas for birds? There's lots of different options, actually, so we'll kind of go through them. So first of all, you, you could, in theory, use, like, sing, like birds sing. You could also say other things that birds do is they chirp. For those of you who like Twitter, birds also tweet. Okay, so that's... Um, where they got, where Twitter was inspired from. That's why their logo's bird. Okay, or one of the reasons. Okay, so sing, chirp, tweet. 
So Beta brings up Old McDonald had a fart. Yeah, exactly. This is all kind of going back to those songs. This is probably just because I have a been working with my my son, um, and we've been naturally talk about animals a lot. Um, actually, I've been <laughs> we've been doing a lot of the Italian version of um, um, Old McDonald. Um, just like it, it's a little bit of a different, but if you took look to try to find like uh, there's um, what's his name? Oh, Zio Tobia, Zio Tobia. And the Italian version is great because like um, at least the versions I've heard is like they like tack on the animals. So, like you do one animal after another after another after another before you get to the refrain. So it's a super intense song, good for your memory skills and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's very similar to that song. Um, yeah. So again, um, mice, we said that they squeak. Hippos were assuming growl, unless someone wants to tell me a better word that hippos do. Um, pigs will oink. Horses will neigh. Birds will tweet, chirp, sing. Um, all those common things. Some other just common words that I think are good to know for horses. In fact, you can even see that for the thumbnail for our video. Horses also gallop. What is a gallop? A gallop is like when you run quickly. Especially for like four-legged animals like horses. Um, horses are your most common example. But you could in theory use it also for instance like for a dog or things like that. Um, especially for exaggeration. Um, another word that you'll see a lot for horses too is trot. A trot is like a slower run. Almost like a jog. So if they run more slowly, you could say that the horse is trotting. Okay. So again... Just to recap, if a horse gallops, that means it's running really fast. If a horse trots, that means it's, it's going a little bit faster than a walk. Okay. All right. Oh, and another verb that I thought of for birds. We, we mentioned earlier, you could say flap. But another word that you may see, too, is also soar. So soar means, like, to fly very high. So, Beta, you don't like cats? Oh, this is so... I'm definitely more of a cat person than a dog person, but I'm also very allergic to cats. So I, growing up, I always had allergies and I didn't care. You know, you, I dealt with it. I took medicine. I, I liked having my cats and things. Um, but yeah, I, I, I totally <laughs> understand with animals. Not everyone's a cat person. I get it. Um, Globetrotter comes from the horse. Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, Globetrotter has that sense of being able to kind of travel all around the world, right? So I, I don't necessarily want to say that Globetrotter came from horsing, but it came from that sense of, you know, movement, like going around the world. So I think that's especially where the trotter um, comes from. But I could be wrong. I mean, maybe it has more horse origins. I don't know. That's a good, that's a good um, question. Okay, here's our next group of animals. Take a look at them. If you have an idea what sounds any of these animals make, um, you can let me know um, in the chat box. I'll be checking. Um, but as I before we do that, let's go over their pronunciation really quick. First one here, duck, duck. Make sure you get that schwa sound. It's not da, it's more duh, duh. And again, you should really feel this in your chest, in this area, kind of your throat and your chest. Duh, duh. If you're feeling it more up here, da, da. It's not quite the sound you're looking for. You want the the duck, duck. Um, our next word, elephant. Elephant. Stress that first syllable really heavy. The other syllables, you can be a lot more relaxed and say faster. Elephant, elephant. Okay. Oh, we got some words. Yeah, so we already got the, the sound that uh, a duck will make, but we'll talk about the others in a moment. A fox, fox. Fox will again have that ah sound. Make sure it's not fox. It's more fox. It's not oh, it's more ah. Wide, really wide mouth back in front of your tongue down. Same thing with the next word too. Frog. Frog. It's not frog. It's more frog. After that, we have a goose. Goose. Your plural form of that will be geese. Geese. Just a heads up. So goose, geese. Just a quick note on that. One goose, two geese. Now, last word is a goat. Goat. Strong O sound. So it's not ga. It's more goat. Goat. So again, duck, elephant, fox, frog, goose, goat. I got one animal. Any ideas for the other animals? So again, first thing a duck is going to do is quack, quack, quack. 
It's that ass sound. That ass sound needs to be really, really strong. Quack, quack, quack. Okay? You can really feel that towards the back of your throat. And quack. So ducks quack. Elephants. What sounds do elephants make? My guess, if I had to pick a sound for them, I would say like an elephant, like trumpets. Um, just like that loud um, noise that they can make with their trunk. Um, I would say they trumpet. For a fox, I would say a fox. A word that they use, I, I see a lot with foxes, is yelp. Okay? And sun is back. Great. Um, so if you have you can use yelp. Like there was a fox that yelped. Okay. And yelp, you know, you can also use that for people too. Yelp is often has a sense for, when you're talking about for people, if someone yelps, like, like a sound someone makes when they are surprised, it can also be like kind of like a shout of like surprise or pain. Okay. Like for instance, if someone, if you feel something in your seat, something like that, like, yeah, like that can be like a quick little yelp. Okay. Um, after that, for frogs, frogs, okay, so you could say croak, croak, that's fine. Another word that you'll see a lot with frogs, too, is ribbit, ribbit. In English, we, we say that frogs ribbit, okay? But you could also say a frogs croaked, croaked, great. Um, notice that also, too, when you say croaked, you're going to go right from that K to that ED sound. So look at that, kt, kt, croaked, croaked. Make sure you're not saying croaked, it's just croaked, um, after goose, I mean, next one is goose. I think a common thing that you'll see with goose is um, honking. It's like a goose, like honk, honk, kind of like that noise, almost like a duck, kind of. Um, you can say like a goose honked. Okay. By the way, honking is also used for cars. So Beta mentions that ribbit sounds better. So what I would say again, if you're trying to capture the sound, the, the better use, the better word is like ribbit. But if you're like writing a story or something like that, you could say like a frog croaked. Okay, but if you're just trying to copy the sound, like onomatopoeia, the word you want is like ribbit. Okay. Um, Ibrahim asked if I read a book called Eat That Frog. No. Is it a children's story? <laughs> Hopefully. Maybe. It's not a cookbook, is it? Um, but yeah, goose we said for honking. Uh, what was I talking about? There was one other thing I was talking about. Oh, for honking. Yeah. Um, honk is also a verb. It's like when you press the horn in your car. So, for instance, you could say, like, he honked the horn. Okay, so, like, for instance, if someone's coming to pick you up, they drive to your house, sometimes you'll hear people, like, honk their horn. You can say, like, he honked their horn. Um, or if you're about to, someone's about to crash into you, you know, you could honk your horn. Okay. Um... Question two about uh, verbs. So again, honk can be used as a verb. Um, croak can be used as a verb. Croak can also be used as a noun as well. And for goats, any ideas what sound a goat makes? Okay. Oh, wow. It's a book about goals and time management for Eat That Frog. So again, Ibrahim, are you recommending this book? Is that a good book? Um would you read it if it wasn't <laughs> I, I personally would. Although there is, you know, there are, there is a food in English called, like, frog legs. Um, for instance, if you ever go to Disney World in Florida, they have some food stalls that sell frog legs. I don't actually know what frog legs are, if they're actual frog legs, but we can, we can always find out. Mm. It's like, what are frog legs? Ah. Yep, they're just the legs of a frog. They're apparently very healthy for you. They have protein, omega-3, vitamin A, and potassium, like bananas. Um, so that's your fun fact for today. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, so you, you can actually order frog legs. Um, but yeah, goats. Moving back to goats. What do goats do? Goats, you can do like, bah. Um... You can also say um, bad with an H. Um, another verb that you may see is you may also see a word like bleat. It's like when a when a goat makes that sound, when a goat goes like bang, you can say like the goat bleated. Um, that's another word that you may see. 
Okay, so let's um, kind of just recap th this group again. So we have duck, elephants, foxes, frogs, goose, or geese, and goats. So again, ducks quack, elephants can trumpet, foxes yelp, frogs can croak or ribbit, geese can honk, and goats can bleat or go bam. Okay, and if of course you have other words and things that come to mind for these animals, be sure to let me know. Moving on to our next group. Almost done. I got three more groups for you. Next one. Um, crickets. Crickets. Again, with the short eye sound. And of course, as always, if you have an idea what sounds do these animals make, be sure to let me know. Post them in the comments. Um, so crickets. Okay. So again, make sure you get that short eye sound. It's almost like two short eyes. Eh, eh. Cricket. Cricket. Okay. Our next one. Crow. Crow. Again, make sure that the O sound is strong enough. Start wide and small round lips. Crow. Crow. Okay. Dogs. Dogs. Dolphins. Dolphins. Donkey. Um, and also dove. Dove. Somebody asked, do I share the PDF of my shows? I actually don't. But that's a really good idea. Unfortunately, th this one for today is not in a PDF form. It's just random images. But I could compile them. Um, that's a, definitely a good idea. I didn't. I'll definitely think of that. Okay. Um, whoa, what is this? Hmm. If you guys have trouble viewing this, be sure to let me know. Okay. Um, so I just got a message about smooth streaming. Hmm. I don't know what that means. Okay. So again, crickets. What do crickets do? Ibrahim had not heard of doves before. Doves, especially... You know, like pigeons, if you're familiar with pigeons, pigeons are like those gray birds that you see in cities, um, especially like in New York. Um, pigeons and doves are like the same species of animal, I think. Um, but doves are more famous for being white, and there's typically a symbol of peace. You see a dove, it's usually a symbol of peace. Okay. Um, crickets. You could say for crickets that they chirp. Chirps like that, that kind of like G -g 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 -g, like that type of sound that they make is a chirp. Okay. How about for crows? Crows, what's the verb that the crow is going to use? Starts with a C. Crows are going to caw. Like caw, 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 caw. That's kind of like the sound that a crow is um, famous for. Dogs. Dogs. Any ideas what sound a dog makes? If you're talking to kids, a lot of times they'll tell you like dogs in English will bow wow. Like bow wow, bow wow. Another sound you may see is like wolf. Wolf. So you'll see for dogs, typically we say um, bow wow. Oh, like jeer? Like am I saying that right? Like jeer, 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 jeer. Um, so again, dogs like bow wow or wolf. Ooh, we got some other ones. Yeah, sun that's great for does. We'll talk about that in a moment. For dolphins. Oh, I'm, I'll be honest. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what dolphins do. That's, I, I always I forget what the, the sound I had sound for that. I mean, yeah, obviously they whistle, click. But that's I, I feel like there's a noise. Clicks, squeaks, whistles. That's kind of what I'm seeing for dolphins. <laughs> Shistle. I want whistle. Okay, so dolphins click, squeak, whistle. I want to see if I can find an actual sound, though. It's like onomatopoeia. Dum, 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 dum. I'm seeing more clicking, clicking. Yeah, not getting a great word. So I guess I'll just stick with those. Okay, so again, clicks, squeaks, things like that for dolphins. Donkeys. Donkeys, I guess the sound that, like, especially for onomatopoeia, like what sound will a kid make for a donkey? It's like, eeyaw, eeyaw. It's kind of like that sound. In fact, if you're familiar with um, Winnie the Pooh, 
any Winnie the Pooh fans, like Eeyore is kind of a play off of Eeyore, that like Eeyore, Eeyore um, sound that they make. Let's see if I can actually find a better verb for that one as well for the sound that a donkey makes. Okay. Oh, a bray. Okay. So you can say donkeys bray. Not a super common phrase, but it's something you could use. Okay, and also you can see the screen, the writing there for like hee haw. It's like eon or like hee haw. Okay. Ibrahim's saying that it's tough to learn all these words. Yeah, for sure. So I definitely suggest kind of like if you saw our video from last time, you know, if you're trying to study these animals or just a particular animal that you're trying to practice for the sound, I definitely recommend drawing a picture. Um and draw a picture of the animal and then draw a picture of the word next to it for the sound. Um, you know, making those images will definitely make the process a little bit easier. Okay. Um, and just target, you know, you don't have to study all of these animals at once because <laughs> it's a farm load of animals, right? Um, just maybe pick like, do like two or three a day and kind of break it down that way. Okay, I'm kind of doing the same thing um, with Italian right now. And our last word here for doves, we had coo. Yeah, and that's perfect. Yeah, so doves coo. Perfect. All right. So again, crickets chirping, crows cawing, dogs barking. Oh, forgot to mention that. For dogs, you can also, of course, say bark. Bark is like when a dog when a dog goes like woof or bow wow. Those are the different types of barks. Barks. Okay. We said that dolphins can click and whistle. Um, Donkeys can blay or like make the sound like hee haw, things like that. And doves can um, coo. So, Beta, is that true? Are you an artist? So, Beta, let me know. I'm going to have some projects for you in the future. Okay, two more groups for you guys. Um, let's go over pronunciation really quick as I'm doing this. Of course, if you have ideas for the words that they can use um, in terms of their sound, be sure to let me know. So again, we have cows, owl, cow, bull, bull. Make sure we're saying bull. It's not bull. It's not bull. It's bull, bull. Notice that my lips are much straighter. The back of my tongue is high and the front of my tongue is down. Like what you see in like full or pull, bull, bull. After that, we have chicken, chicken with the short eye sound. So it's not cheek, it's chick, chicken. Okay, and same thing with the next word as well, chick, chick. Our next one, um, chimpanzee, chimpanzee. Make sure that that Z sound is strong at the end, chimpanzee. And then the last one, the more common word you're going to see, um, at least in the U.S., is a rooster. Okay, a rooster for a male um, hen or a male chicken. Okay? And in fact, that's another thing too. For chicken, you'll, you'll also see the word hen. Chicken a lot of times refers to the meat, whereas hen refers to the bird. Okay, let's kind of go for, we can do cows and bulls kind of together. So cows and bulls, obviously they're famous, probably the most famous word in English is gonna be that they moo, okay? But if you're trying to look for the verb, the verb is going to be too low, too low. Okay, so, Cows and bulls can low like that, like that kind of. That's a that's called a low or to low. Okay, but you could also just say moo. Okay. Chickens in English. In English, this chickens are known for bucking, like buck, 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 buck. Okay. Um. Another word you may see is also cluck. So you say see like buck, buck, or like cluck, cluck. Um, that's what they're famous. Okay. Ooh, we'll talk about snakes very soon. Hang tight. Um, our thumbnail, of course, had a clue for snakes. Um, chimpanzees. Chimpanzees kind of like, um, similar sounds for monkeys, I want to say. Like, kind of like screeching, um, squealing. And then roosters are famous for, like, saying, like, cock a doodle doo. That's what roosters are famous for. cock a doodle doo Especially like at 6 o'clock or around dawn in the morning. Okay. 
So again, cows, bulls, chickens, chicks, chimpanzees, and roosters. And again, we said moose, buck, buck, or cluck. Um, chimpanzees, again, squeaks, um, or yelps even. And then roosters, cock-a-doodle-doop. Come. Questions to Ibrahim asks, which of these animals are we allowed to eat in the U.S.? I don't know if there are like straight bans on animals that you can't eat, but I can tell you which ones are more common. We can kind of go through the list. I've never eaten a lion. Surprise. I've never eaten monkey either. I've never tried to eat a mosquito intentionally or wolf or birds. I mean, or owls. Uh, I've never eaten a mouse. I've never eaten a hippo. I have eaten pig, pork, ham, bacon. Um, I know for lots of people here, you can't necessarily eat pig. Um, <laughs> we actually, <laughs> one of, I used to work with a lot of students from Saudi Arabia and, um, <laughs> some of the students got addicted to pork rinds, which is a snack food that's made from pork, but somehow the, the students didn't know that it, they were made out of pig. So that was unfortunate <laughs> and kind of awkward to tell them that, oh yeah, well that that's made out of pork rinds are made out of pork, which is pig. But hey, these things happen. You know, you don't, you, if you don't know you're doing it, you're not doing it intentionally, you know, things happen. Um, Horse, I think you can eat horse. I've never eaten horse. Actually, um, speaking of eating animals, IKEA is the the, the furniture store is is famous in the past. I don't know if they still do it, but in the past, their their meatballs were made out of horse meat. Um, so I think it's legal to eat horse, but it's just kind of um, some people don't like the idea of eating horse. Um, birds. Uh, I mean, I guess I've eaten birds in the sense I've eaten, like, chicken and things. Um, duck. I have not eaten duck, but you can eat duck. Elephant, never eaten. Fox, never eaten. Frog, I don't think I've eaten. I don't think I've had frog legs before. Goose, I haven't eaten. Goat, I have eaten. Crickets, I don't think I've eaten. Crows, I don't think I've eaten. Dog, I have not eaten. I don't know if it's illegal to eat dogs in the U.S., but it's definitely very um, taboo. People don't like hearing about eating dogs. Um, dolphin, I haven't intentionally eaten, although, you know, there's always reports that when you eat tuna, that sometimes in tuna, there may be dolphin meat in there. Um, donkey, I don't think I've eaten. Dove, I've never eaten. Yeah. Cows, I've eaten. Um, for beef, chicken, one of my favorite meats. Sorry, chickens. Um, chimpanzees, I've never eaten. Rooster, I ate were hens and not roosters, but I could be wrong. Okay. Can we find all these new words in less description after the live stream? Yes, I can. I will add them to the description. Yeah, I can do that after this because I don't think I have a class right away. So I will add some notes about these things in the lesson notes afterwards. Um, good question. Um, you'll also see um, in the video, the, the chat will replay too. So you can see all the words and the sounds and things too. Okay. This is our last group. Um... And if you, again, as we go through this, if you have an idea about what sound did these animals make, be sure to let me know in the, in the chat box. So take a look. Um, but again, let's go over pronunciation for these words. First one, bat with that ah sound. Ah, ba, bat, bat. Our next one, bear, bear. Okay. After that, we have bee, bee, followed by lamb. Lamb. And again, this is a case where you have that ah sound plus a nasal. So again, remember, it's going to break into two parts. It's not lamb. It's lamb. Am. Am. Try to get that separation, okay? Lamb. Lamb. Camel. Camel. Cat. Cat. Ibrahim also adds um, sheep to the list of animals he has eaten. I think that's a great list. Yeah. Hey, Rick, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions as we go through this, let me know. We're on our last group of animals. Then we'll do a quick review. Okay. Um, so our first word here again, bat. Bat. Any ideas what sound a bat makes? I would probably use like screech. Screech. And again, the screech is like a very high pitched sound. Like, <laughs> I can't even do it. My throat's not laughing right now. E, e like screech. Screech. I've heard that, like, uh, Ibrahim's mentioning camel meat. I've heard that camel meat is also, I've heard some people eat camel. 
Um, and I've heard not bad things about it. Oh, another animal that I've eaten that I think is delicious, um, which you may not expect, is alligator. Um, if you guys go to the U.S. sometime and you go down south to New Orleans, New Orleans is a city that's very famous for music and also for food, especially a, a type of food that's called Cajun food. Um, but in some of the dishes, they have um, alligator, and alligator tastes very good. Um, so I definitely recommend if you're open to trying new meats, I would suggest trying alligator. Um, but yes, in terms of sounds, again, for bats, I would say like screech. Um, for bears, bears are going to have kind of similar words that we saw for um, lions. So again, like roar and growl, are pretty common um, onomatopoeias, sound words that you'll see with um, bears roaring and growling. After that, we have our bee. And again, I think it, we saw this earlier as well. I think a good verb for bees would be buzz. The bees buzz. Make sure we say that buzz sound. Make sure your throat's vibrating enough. It's not buzz. It's buzz. Try to make sure that that zzz sound is great. Okay. All right, Rick, thanks for the kind words on the shadowing exercises. Yeah, I try to. Those are fun to make. I love making the dialogues for those because I never know how exactly I'm going to. <laughs> incorporate it, try to do something fun with them. But I'm glad you enjoyed them. Um, yeah, so again, for bees, they buzz. Lambs. Lambs, again, you could probably say beat. In terms of the actual sound they make, again, you can say like ba, ba, or again, ba with an H as well. Okay. Oh, and then Sun mentioned a good word for bees as well. Instead of buzz, you can use buzz. You could also use hum. I think hum's a great word as well. Gets that same sense of that mmm um, for, for bees. Camels? I don't know what sound a camel makes. What sounds do camels make? If you guys know, be sure to let me know. What's the sound that a camel makes? Moaning. Bellow, oh, bellow's a good one. So apparently camels can bellow, groan, moan. So kind of like anytime you like those sounds like, or like those are kind of like moans and groans um, that you could associate with not just them. Okay. Um, and lastly for cats, sound that a cat makes. I've been saying too many languages. How would, how would you spell like, oh, M-E-O-W. Okay, so cats like meow, meow. That's the sound that a cat would make in English and that's how you would write it, meow, meow, okay. Another sound, so like when a cat is, you know, happy. Yeah, perfect, just like son mentioned there for meow. Um, when a cat is happy, you can feel that vibration in their throat. And that sound is called any ideas? The sound that a cat makes when it's happy? Starts with a P. And that's going to be a purr with two R's. It's like a cat purrs. It's like when it that, that kind of type sound that is purring. Okay? So again, we said bats can screech, bears can roar or growl, bees can buzz or hum, lambs can bleat or bat, um, camels can groan or moan or bellow, and then cats can meow or purr. Okay, so I think that's all of our animals. Yeah, Rick got it great with purr, perfect. Um, let's do a quick quiz so you can test yourself, see how well you remember everything. I'm just gonna pick some random animals so you could tell me what sounds they make. Okay, so for instance, for a wolf, Anyone remember what sound a wolf can make? Give you guys a couple seconds because I know there can be a delay. Um, other sounds too you can start focusing on too. So wolf and owl. What sounds can wolves and owls make? Any ideas? I'll give the answer in a moment. See if anyone in my chat box has an idea. So again, with wolves, the key word that we had was howling. So wolves can howl that like, ow, like that kind of howl movement or howl sound. Okay. Wolves, I think they can also like bark. Well, how about for owls? If you remember what sound can an owl make? 
Al, we said can hoot. Perfect. Ibrahim got it. Yeah, so owls can hoot. In our next group, what sounds do horses make and what sounds do pigs make? Any ideas for sounds that a horse can make and sounds that a pig can make? I know earlier someone had gotten, I think it was Ibrahim, had mentioned that horses can neigh. Okay, and again, that's N-E-I-G-H. Make sure it's not I-E, it's E-I. Okay. And pigs, pigs can oink. So again, O-I-N-K, that oink, oink type sound. Um, Four, pigs. Really quick, also for birds, you know, we mentioned some great verbs. So for birds, that action where they're like moving their wings to fly. If you remember what we said for that, we called that, starts with an F, called that flapping, to flap. We also said that birds can chirp or tweet or sing. Okay. And it's okay if you forget these as well. You know, you always have the video for reference. So no worries, Ibrahim. Okay. For our next one, how about for, let's do, if you can remember for ducks and frogs. Any idea? If people remember what sounds those make? Frogs and ducks. So again, in terms of sound, we say that frogs can ribbit, ribbit, okay? You could also use croak, croak. Sorry about, sorry about my son. I must be playing around with something for ice cream, I think. Um, also for ducks, ducks we said they can quack. And of course our birds, all our birds, like geese and ducks and birds in general, of course they do have wings. Thank you, son. Next group, if you guys can remember, what sound does a crow make? And what sound does a dove make? So again, crows and doves. Okay. Oh, Ibrahim also mentioned the word um, cluck. And again, clucking is just going to be, especially for like chickens, like hens, hens, and even roosters, I believe, to a degree, is for clucking. Um, croaking will be for, yeah, croaking will be for frogs. And again, for crows and doves, crows are going to be, <laughs> we don't get <laughs> a B plus. <laughs> crows can caw, caw, and doves can coo. So again, some got a dove one. Great. Okay. So again, crows will do that. Caw, caw, and then doves will coo. I need to get some water because my throat is very dry. Okay. Second to last group. Um, we mentioned chickens already. Um, so again, chickens can cluck. If you remember the sound that a rooster makes, let me know. Cow makes. So again, roosters and cows. Any ideas? Let's start with the rooster. When they wake you up at like right around dun, dawn, right around sunrise, they will wake you up with, again, like cock a doodle doo. And then for a cow, we the verb that you can use is low. Like there's cows lowing in a field. Or if you're just trying to write the sound, you could also say moo. So cows moo. And our last little quiz. Um, so let's do again for bees and cats. What sounds do bees make? What sounds do cats make? We had two different verbs for bee. Um, one was given to us, I believe, by sun, which is great. Um, so you could use hum, like bees were humming. You could also say bees were buzzing. And then for cats, you could say cats meow. Yeah. Okay. You can also say cats purr. Purr. Want to get that sound they make when they're happy. Okay. That is a lot of animals. That's a lot of animal vocabulary, animal sounds, lots of useful verbs and things like that. Remember that a lot of them can also apply to people. So for instance, like um like growling and um even like roaring, yelping, um, things like that. These are also things that people could in theory do as well. And Ibrahim is right for bees, again, buzzing, and humming as well for buzzing, I mean, uh, humming for buzzing, humming for bees, okay. Um, I'm going to take a moment, um, once this video is done, to try to write down some of those keywords that we mentioned in the lesson description, so that way you can um, get some notes on everything we said. And of course, if you guys have other questions on other animals, things we didn't get to today, be sure to let me know, and I'll be happy to respond in the comments. Again, tomorrow I have a video coming up that's going to be focusing on placement, talking about how to make yourself sound natural, even if you have the right 
you know, you, you're talking, you have the right mouth position, you have the right pitch, but you feel like something still sounds a little bit weird. Um, our next video is going to be talking about placement to help you with that. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate um, seeing you here. Again, we do this live stream every Saturday um, around 13.30, um, 1.30 p.m. Um, New York time. Um, great to see you. I will see you in our next video. I um, hope you have a good day, have a good night, and a good afternoon. Thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care. Bye. What's going on?